so now we are going to discuss about radiosity it is a very important property so let us see what is radiosity radiosity accounts for all radiant energy leaving a surface so you can see here uh, the surface which is shown here and this is the irradiation which is falling on it means the energy which is falling on it and you can see the energy is leaving here one is in the form of emission and other is in the form of the reflected portion of the irradiation so basically radiosity comprises of both emission as well as the reflected portion of the irradiation since this radiation includes the reflected portion of the irradiation as well as the direct emission the radiosity is therefore different from the emissive power so it's not emissive power because emissive power means the energy emitted here uh, the energy which is leaving the surface is comprising of two things one is the emission and other is the reflected portion portion of the irradiation so it is different from the emissive power now we discuss about the spectral radiosity which is represented here by j lambda and the radiosity here is represented as j actually so what is j lambda j lambda is watt per meter square micrometer is its a unit it represents the rate at which the radiation of wavelength lambda leaves a unit area of the surface per unit wavelength interval d lambda about lambda so uh, that is basically the energy which is leaving the surface per unit area of the surface and per unit wavelength about the interval d lambda about lambda since it accounts for the radiation leaving in all directions it is related to the intensity associated with the emission and reflection so here once again we have to discuss about the intensity of uh, uh, radiation uh, related to emission as well as reflection which is represented here as i lambda e plus r so e stands for emission and r stands for reflection and it will also be dependent upon lambda theta and phi and we can calculate the value of j lambda from the expression i lambda e plus r which is dependent upon lambda theta and phi cos theta sin theta d theta d phi so this is the solid angle basically this is d omega so we can uh, differentiate this equation for phi equal to 0 to 2 pi and theta equal to 0 to pi by 2 and get the value of the radiosity or uh, sorry spectral radiosity or say monochromatic radiosity so once again uh, same equation you can see it here we have uh, the value of the uh, spectral radiosity and if we have to calculate the total radiosity j that can be calculated by uh, integrating this equation of j lambda as a function of lambda for lambda equal to 0 to lambda equal to infinity so this is the value of the total radiosity given by j and we can write j as now this is the value of so you can say j lambda okay and uh, from here we can calculate the value of j by using this is lambda is equal to 0 to lambda is equal to infinity now if we consider surface both as diffuse reflected and a diffuse emitter then i lambda er is independent of theta and phi and we can say now that j lambda will be equal to pi times i lambda e plus r and j is equal to pi i e plus r so this results have been uh, not derived here rather this we have already discussed in the case of emission as well as irradiation so we have directly taken it from there basically now what is black body radiation we have discussed about the black body earlier also we are going to revise this topic once again a black body absorbs all the incident radiation regardless of the wavelength and the direction for a prescribed temperature and wavelength no surface can emit more energy than a black body although the radiation emitted by a black body is a function of wavelength and temperature it is independent of direction so this is very important point that is a black body is a diffuse emitter means it can uh, emit the energy in, at the equal rate in all the direction the intensity of the energy which is leaving a black surface is equal in all the directions as a perfect absorber and emitter the black body serves as a standard against which the radiative properties of actual surfaces may be compared so this is also a very important point here although closely approximated by some surfaces 
it is important to note that no surface has precisely the properties of a black body so black body is a sort of assumption for us the closest approximation is achieved by a cavity whose inner surface is at uniform temperature if the radiation enters the cavity through a small aperture as shown in the diagram so you can see here this is the incident radiation falling in the cavity it is likely to experience many reflections before re-emergence re-emergence from the cavity actually hence it is almost entirely absorbed by the cavity and the black body behavior is approximately approximated so basically a, a cavity behaves as a black body and from the thermodynamic principles it may then be argued that radiation leaving the aperture depends only on the surface temperature and corresponds to the black body emission so basically uh, when this uh, emission is taking place we can say whatever the emission is taking place i lambda e that would be equal to intensity of the black body radiation or the monochromatic intensity of the uh, in intensity of the black body and similarly if we are uh, having a small surface which is lying inside this black body then we know that whatever will be the energy which will falling on this will be all uh, will be irradiation basically but there won't be any reflection actually okay there won't be any reflection so we can say uh, this will be behaving as a g lambda will be equal to e lambda b so since black body emission is diffuse the spectral intensity i lambda b of the radiation leaving the cavity is independent of the direction this is uh, one of the uh, points which i wanted to tell you this one moreover since the radiation field in the cavity which is the cumulative effect of emission and reflection from the cavity surface must be same as that from the radiation emerging from the aperture it also follows that a black body radiation field exists within the cavity accordingly any small surface in the cavity experiences a radiation for which g lambda will be equal to e b lambda which is lambda as a function of lambda t so basically g lambda is nothing but uh, this is the energy which is uh, leaving the uh, uh, this uh, cavity body and that irradiation will be equal to e lambda b which is falling on the uh, small surface this surface is diffusely irradiated regardless of its orientation black body radiation exists within the cavity irrespective of the whether the cavity surface is highly reflecting or absorbing now let us discuss about the planck's distribution the black body spectral intensity is well known having been first determined by planck it is given by i lambda b b stands for the black body having the uh, functional relationship of lambda and t it is given by 2 hc not square divided by lambda raised to power 5 exponential hc not divided by lambda kt minus 1 so this is the uh, black body spectral intensity okay and where h is the bolts uh, uh, planck's constant given by 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second and k is the boltzmann constant given by 1.381 into 10 to the power minus 23 joule per kelvin and c not is the velocity uh, speed of the light which is equal to 2.998 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and t is the absolute temperature of the black body since the black body is a diffuse emitter it follows from the equation 12.11 this is equation 12.11 that its spectral emissive power is e lambda b will be equal to pi times i lambda b this relation we have already discussed earlier and then we can put the value of uh, i lambda b so this is i lambda b which is uh, the planck's law so this value is nothing but this is equal to 2 pi h c not square and this c2 is nothing but uh, hc not divided by k so this is uh, once again you can see it here so same value has been written here we are first and the second radiation constants are c1 which is equal to 2 pi hc not square which is equal to 3.742 into 10 to the power 8 watt per micro meter raised to power 4 divided by meter square and c2 is equal to hc not by k and its value is 1.439 into 10 to the power 4 micrometer kelvin so this uh, values are not necessary to be 
remembered you just have to focus uh, that this is the value of e lambda b equation of e lambda b is known as planck's distribution and is plotted in figure in the next slide for the selected temperatures several important features should be noted so let us uh, discuss these features so this is a very important diagram here once again i have written this particular equation and here you can see on the y axis we have the value of e lambda b this is e lambda b it is spectral emissive power of the black body given in watt per meter square micrometer so this is the unit which is written here and here we have the wavelength so it is spectral black body emissive power now what are the various uh, important features number one is the emitted radiation varies continuously with the wavelength so that you can see first of all uh, if you take any of the curves here for example 50 degree, degree curve so first of all the emission is increasing and then it is reaching a peak and then it is going down and the same thing is happening for the other temperature also at any wavelength the magnitude of the emitted radiation increases with increasing temperature so you can see if i take uh, any wavelength for example 10 so as the temperature is increasing the emissive power is also increasing so this you can see from here third one is the spectral region in which the radiation is concentrated depends on the temperature so here you can see uh, with comparatively more radiation appearing at the shorter wavelength as the temperature increases so it's very clear here so as the uh, temperature is increasing for example you see 50 kelvin 100 kelvin 300 kelvin the maxima is shifting towards the left hand side so once the maxima is shifting towards the left hand side you can see if i have to calculate the value of the emission between this particular range then this is the area and this will be larger in comparison to the remaining wavelength range similarly if i go to this uh, 5800 kelvin so you can see here this is the maxima and mo most of the energy is uh, most of the energy is lying near to the shorter wavelength a significant fraction of the radiation emitted by the sun which may be approximated as a black body at 5800 kelvin so 5800 kelvin uh, is corresponding to sun temperature is in the visible visible range of the spectrum so what is the visible visible range this is the visible range of the spectrum which is varying between 0 0.4 to 0 0.76 so this is 0 0.4 to 0 0.76 so sun's maximum radiation lies in this particular range actually in contrast to t less than equal to or less than or equal to 800 kelvin emission is predominantly in the infrared region of the spectrum and is not visible to the eye so if you see 800 kelvin so here you have the infrared radiation towards this side towards this side so uh, this is what uh, is shown in this particular graph now what is mean displacement loss you can see here for different values of temperature say 50 100 300 800 and so on you can see the peak of the emission is here 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 and here and if we join these peak points we get a this dotted line and this dotted line shows a constant value which is given by lambda t max lambda max into t which is equal to 2898 micrometer kelvin and this is basically known as the wien displacement law so you can see here from this figure we see that the black body spectral distribution has a maximum and the corresponding wavelength lambda max depends upon the temperature so as the temperature increases lambda max is uh, towards the lower wavelength range the nature of this dependence may be obtained by differentiating equation 12.24 this is the equation 12.24 which relates the instant intensity of the black body radiation with the emission of the black body um, uh, monochromatic emission with respect to lambda and setting the result equal to zero means we have to calculate the value of d e lambda divided by d lambda and equate it equal to zero so we will get this relation lambda t lambda max t is equal to constant where c3 is given by 2898 micrometer kelvin so this is the wien's displacement law the above equation is known as 
mean displacement law and the locus of the points described by the law is plotted as a dashed line in the figure 12.2 this i have already told you according to this result the maximum spectral msc power is displaced to the shorter wavelengths with increasing temperature the emission is in the middle of the visible spectrum for lambda equal to 0.5 microns so you can see here here you can get 0.5 micron for solar radiation since the sun emits approximately as a black body at 5800 kelvin for a black body at 1000 kelvin so we are talking about this the peak occurs a uh, peak of the emission occurs at 2.9 micron meter so this value is 2.9 and it is appearing as a red light okay with increasing temperature shorter wavelengths become more prominent until eventually significant emission occurs over the entire visible spectrum for example a tungsten filament lamp operating at 2900 kelvin lambda max will be equal to 1 micron meter so somewhere here you can see the temperature will be uh, 2900 kelvin and uh, the value will be approximately equal to 1 micron so you can see it here it is this value is 1 all the most of the emission remains in the infrared region so this is the infrared region now uh, here we can uh, now look for the stefan boltzmann's law the total msc power of a black body eb may be expressed as eb is equal to eb lambda d lambda and here we can integrate this uh, over the wavelength length uh, wave, wavelength range lambda is equal to 0 to infinity so eb will be equal to this is the value of eb lambda this uh, we have planck's distribution law uh, from there we have written this particular value and when we perform the integration it can be shown that eb is equal to sigma t raised to power 4 Where sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant, which depends upon C1 and C2, and has the numerical value equal to 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt per meter square Kelvin. It enables calculation of the amount of radiation emitted in all directions and over all wavelengths simply by the knowledge of temperature of the body or the black body. Because this emission is diffuse, hence the total intensity associated with black body. emission is given by ib is equal to eb divided by pi this we have already proved this uh, topic of band emission we will do in the next lecture